Fast as lightning, sharp as sword. Greetings, YouTube. I'm Lightning Sword. The last episode Fluttershy was in wasn't exactly delightful. Applejack has been slowly pissing me off over the last few episodes. This time they're being paired up exclusively for the first time. We just got the fault in our cutie marks, and no follow-up to a stellar episode lives up to its predecessor. And Season 6 Part 2 overall has been below average so far. Just some of the reasons why I expected Viva Las Pegasus to fail extraordinarily, and the same reasons why I was pleasantly surprised. Of course, cutie map episodes tend to be pretty good overall, and this was written by Burke and Wyatt, the same team behind the times they are a changeling. So I went into this with... tentative hopes. And it turned out to be pretty good. Again, not as good as the previous episode, but not rotten at all. Let's do this. We begin straight to the point. The map is sending two of our girls to Las Pegasus. I guess Burke and Wyatt learned a thing or two on pacing from the last episode. This time it's Fluttershy and Applejack, a pair we've never seen together at all. Nope, doesn't count. Eh, close, but still not quite. Well, since the map is sending the country girl and the introvert to a huge urban house party, friendship problems would be the least of their worries. Probably not as bad as we think. It can't just be a loud, obnoxious party all the time. Right? Uh, Applejack? It isn't as bad as we thought. Don't say it's worse. You're right. It's worse! It's called subverting expectations, people! So Flutters and AJ hit the city scene, which, by the way, has been proven to be a Las Vegas parallel and not Los Angeles. The latter of which has drug trade, gang violence, and police corruption out the ass. Not to mention a new riot every 15 years or so. So, if the map actually sends them to L.A., they're f***ed. And the first hotel they come to is run by a tycoon named Gladmane. Well, uh, it is a little embarrassing, but the crowd seemed to like it. <laughs> so... Elvis Pony. Yeah, like that hasn't been done 8 million times in media already. Give me a Michael Jackson Pony, then I'll be impressed. Mr. Gladmane? Just Gladmane will do and it's a pleasure to meet actual cohorts of the Princess of Friendship. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Elvis, got it. You know who we are? I'm what you might call a friendship connoisseur. So naturally, I'm familiar with the friends of the great Twilight Spark. He's the bad guy, calling it now. So Elvis Pony takes AJ and Flutters on a guided tour where he flirts with the acrobat and introduces the girls to the... stage manager? Choreographer? Napoleon. I got nothing. I'm just going to keep on giving a tour to my new friends, Applejack and Fluttershy. Howdy. Hi. I've never seen a pink prairie dog before. Oh, so cute. All oh, the cute. I can't take it. It's too much. Oh. It's okay. I'm alright. I'm fine. Just let me steady my nerves. Okay. I'm good. So they move on to the animal trying to- Oh! So hideous. I feel violated. I'm disturbed. I need more flooded cute. Oh, um, coming! <sighs> okay. I'm good again. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong around here at all. I figured looking for a friendship problem in Las Pegasus would be like trying to find a needle in a stack of needles. Oh, now you choose to fake us out with the dialogue. So with nothing left to go on, that's when the friendship problem seems to drop on them from out of nowhere. As it usually does. The notorious Flim Flam brothers have returned. And Applejack is still not on lovely terms with them. Understandable, considering they kidnapped her and her friends, tried to brainwash them, and stole their cutie marks. Oh shit, wrong villain. Sorry about that. Well, it seems there's a bit of a sibling rivalry going on with the two brothers, and it seems fairly obvious that this is the problem they were sent to solve. Absolutely not. Oh, come on, AJ. You're better than that. Don't you remember? You instantly forgave them for all their past crimes and made them your friends for no satisfying reason. Damn, wrong villain again. Sorry. So, Applejack's grudge is on full display, but Fluttershy insists they help them. Meanwhile, Hound Dog mentions that with their individual talents put together, they'd take the place over. Motive! Check! 
So while Fluttershy gives the boys a clinical assessment, Applejack is determined to avoid the shysters and find a different problem to solve. That's like a firefighter showing up at a burning building and saying, F*** this, there's a grease fire two blocks down, I'm gonna put that shit out instead. All because they did bad stuff to her. <coughs> Hypocrite! <coughs> well, there's the grease fire now. The acrobat's having a spat with her manager and... <laughs> Flutter cute! Okay, I'm good. And the animal trainers are disagreeing too. Two friendship problems in the same theater? Now we're talking! Two grease fires in one place? Now I can really avoid that burning building! And with Flim and Flam included, that makes three problems overall. That, if resolved, Gladmane suffers. But... The only pony who benefits from all this feuding is Gladmane. But by all accounts, he's the best friend any of these ponies have. Means. Check. But the animals have something different to say. Well, Bernard, that adorable bunny from the acrobat's hat, claims that every morning, Gladmane tells the director that the star wants control of the show, and every afternoon tells the star that the director wants to get rid of her. But neither is true. In the Flying Prairinos, the Pink Prairie Dog family, say Gladmane keeps changing their act to make each trainer think the other is doing it. So all his talk about friendship is just a load of applesauce. Opportunity? Check. Gladmane's the bad guy. Called it. So they have to dupe him into spilling the beans somehow. Gee, if only there was a pony who knew how to trick a trickster. Or maybe a pair of ponies? Not only is she absolutely right in forcing AJ to drop her petty grudge, but she looks so super adorable doing it. Oh, sassy shy. So the brothers reveal that Gladmane's splitting them up, and the girls warn them why. Sounds to me like neither of you said those things. Why'd you believe Gladmane when he said you did? Why would he lie? Because he's afraid that the two of you together could move in and take over his resort. And if I'm telling you he said it, you know it's the absolute truth because you never lie! Ahem. <clears throat> Raise this bull, raise this bull, one, two, three, four, four episodes. You raise this bull, one, two, three, four. Uh, whatever. Now the game is on to trick old blue suede horseshoes into confessing his machinations. Fluttershy's in disguise as a rich tycoon, and they fool Gladmane into thinking she's window shopping for property on the strip. Are all of you sure this is a good idea? Any idea with you in that dress is a good idea, baby. Well, with the devil in disguise's future plans for his empire threatened by this new competitor, he ups his game to get her moving. Impossibly wants you to know she's very impressed, but doesn't think you can keep a resort of this caliber going for long. Oh, and why is that? Because you've got the best talents in the industry. What stops them from just leaving to join any competitor? Uh, a little less conversation and a little more action, please. But that's when AJ and the twins spring the trap and get caught red-hoofed. You knew the whole time? Never try to con a con pony. <laughs> Shit, he's good. Later, the girls make one last attempt at diplomacy, but of course, hunk a hunk a piece of crap can't help but gloat about his success. Oh, you can't trick a confession out of a pony like me. I am always one step ahead. Well, you better check your hooves, because you just stepped in a confession. It's called a hustle, sweetheart. And with that, Gladmane's employees find him out, and his empire crumbles. Okay, you want to say it or should I? Nah, it's all right. AJ, go for it. Gladmane has left the building. So, now that Elvis is no longer relevant, the brothers take over the venue, and as is typical of them, continue to hustle everyone out of their money. And then they dodged responsibility for their crimes, went to live with the princess as her pupils, and lived happily ever after. F***! Wrong villain again.
<sighs> oh well. That was Viva Las Pegasus. Pretty good. For a kid's show, the plot for this one is refreshingly complex. Almost like something out of a soap opera. And we get to see both Applejack and Fluttershy using the lessons they've learned over the course of the series to full effect. Especially Fluttershy. I mean, here she is meeting some pony new in the first season. And here she is meeting someone new in season six. Hi. Still shy, but far less scared than before. Ever since season five started, they could do no wrong with her character. Except that. That was bullshit. The world building is excellent, especially the location designs, the characterization shines, and the side characters are vivid and interesting. To say the least. And for the first time in a while, we finally get a cunning, threatening male antagonist. Nice to know not every creature in Equestria with an XY chromosome is a complete f***ing Nimrod. And the Flim Flam Brothers gave us a sharp slap in the face with reality. Some villains will always be villains, even if you show them friendship or have to work with them to achieve a common goal. And not everyone, you, can be redeemed, you, or can be worthy of redemption, especially you. The only thing holding this episode back is Applejack's insufferable hypocrisy. I guess since it contributed to the solution, I can't say too much about it. But even so, every other redeemed villain she's been in contact with, she's responded to with either acceptance or indifference. And of them all, the Flim Flam brothers were probably the least offensive to her, and she treats them with the most animosity? While the jealous megalomaniac and the time-traveling cutie mark thief get a free pass? I think the season is starting to make Applejack my second least favorite of the main six. Well, at least she's in character. And since she hasn't had too much focus and thus hasn't learned too many lessons, there's still a chance for her to learn and improve. Unlike some. A relieving step up from mixed bag episodes like 28 Pranks Later and Buckball Season, Viva Las Pegasus brought some surprises to the table. It wasn't nearly as good as The Fault in Our Cutie Marks, but unlike most of the rest of Season 6 Part 2, I didn't want to rip my own head off and beat myself to death with it by the end of the episode. I give it points for that. Which sucks, because I didn't use to. Because I didn't have to. Okay, now that that's out of the way, I'll see if I can prepare for a review of Equestria Girls 4. If you like the review, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, support me on Patreon, and I'll be back with a new video soon. Until then, this is Lightning Sword. Stay quick, stay sharp, and thanks for watching. It's funny how being a background pony has become a punishment for former antagonists nowadays.